hey, let's go on. Let's say that the eigenfunctions uh, of Hermitian operators are orthogonal. Let's actually go ahead and prove that. Oh, it's getting exciting. So uh, we're now going to take two different eigenfunctions, say in the M state, and now we're going to operate with an operator on the N state. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we want to um, show that these two are orthogonal. In other words, if you take this times that, you'll get um, zero if M and N are not equal. All right, since A is Hermitian, we can write this. This is the definition of Hermitian. We operate on psi m. And again, this means we're doing complex conjugate. You have to take complex conjugate of the operator before you operate on it, times psi n. That's the definition of Hermitian. So we're going to start with Hermitian. And now we're going to show that um, eventually that psi m times psi n is equal to um, 0. OK, let's do that. So we have psi m. And then we have a operating psi n gives you the eigenvalue a sub n times psi n. That's equal to, let's see, you do this. Well, here we'll get the uh, eigenvalue a sub m corresponding to state m times psi m psi n. OK, so far so good. These are constants. So a n times psi m psi n. That's equal to, again, we have to remember that's complex conjugate, a sub m, complex conjugate, psi m, psi n. But we just shown that eigenvalues are real, so this is a real number here, so the complex conjugate is equal to its, um, it's equal to the real number. <laughs> so we have a sub n, psi m, psi n, is equal to a sub m, psi m, psi n. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, and maybe you can recognize if these are two different states that have two different um, eigenvalues, if a n not equal to a m, then this implies that, ooh, look at this, psi m, psi n is equal to zero. In other words, if you integrate over all space, of the complex conjugate of this wave function times the wave function, um, a different wave function, m and n are not equal, you'll get zero, which means psi m and psi n are orthogonal. Okay, that's kind of cool. Well, maybe that's not obvious. Let, let's redo, redo this. Uh, let's say uh, let's subtract, um, let's take this on the other side. So here we have a n minus a m times this integral psi m psi n. That's equal to zero. So we just subtracted that. So this, we're assuming that we have two different eigenvalues here, n and m. So this implies that this is not equal to zero. And the only way you can get this number to be equal to zero is for this to equal zero. So the product of m times n in greater over all space is zero, which means m and n are orthogonal. All right, this was a big if. Uh, if the two eigenvalues of the two different states are not equal. But we talked about degeneracy. Degeneracy means that uh, for, for a set of quantum numbers, which are denoted here by n and m, you can have degeneracy. In other words, the um, expectation value or the what you not the expectation value, but the eigenvalue. So what you expect to measure would be the same, same eigenvalue. So that's degeneracy. So what happens if you have degeneracy? This argument will not work because now if degeneracy, this automatically is equal to zero. And therefore, this does not necessarily have to be zero. Well, there's a technique called uh, Schmidt Uh, orthogonalization. Orthogonal. I don't know how to spell this. But it's a procedure by which you can orthogonalize, <laughs> that's a word, orthogonalize two things that are degenerate. 
Now, the, the thing about uh, the Schmidt orthogonalization is if you have, say, two wave functions, psi m and psi n, if they are uh, degenerate, meaning they have the same eigenvalues, even though they're two different states, uh, you can orthogonalize them. So you combine psi m and psi n to make uh, two orthogonal wave functions. So how do you actually combine those? Well, let's uh, say psi n. Let's give this a new, um, let's combine this. This will be the old psi n plus some constant c times psi m. So now we're saying, okay, psi n, they're um, in fact uh, degenerate, but let's make a new wave function for psi n. We'll mix in some psi m to that. And what you want to do is to pick the value of c so that the product of psi m times this psi n, this new value of psi n, is equal to zero. This will make the new value, uh, the new wave function here, which is a combination of the old wave, old both wave functions, uh, make those orthogonal. So how do you pick a value? Well, just let's see here. Uh, let's form the product psi m, psi n star uh, prime. Well, that's uh, psi m. Psi n prime is the old psi n plus c times the, uh, the old m. And uh, this would just be psi m psi n plus c times psi m psi m. And you want that to be equal to zero. So what value of c makes these this vector uh, orthogonal? Well, we just solved this equation for c. c is just equal to psi m psi n over psi m psi m. So if you pick this value of c, then um, you have these, uh, this pair of vectors or this pair of wave functions orthogonal. And then you can go ahead and, uh, well, they're already automatically orthogonal. So that shows that even for a degenerate case, the wave functions of uh, her, her wave functions or the eigenfunctions of a Hermite operator or orthogonal. All right, so there's some properties of Hermite opera, uh, operators that are Hermitian operators are important for quantum mechanics.